Hey guys, I'm trying something a little different today. I noticed the audio was really lacking on my shooting the bowl videos, so I decided to plug the headset into my phone. Of course, my phone's what I use to film all my videos. I don't have a decent video camera. Um, again, I'm a YouTuber on a budget, so this is the way I do it. But anyway, the one thing that hasn't changed, I can't shoot the bowl without my cigar and my coffee. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little video tribute to uh, the American veteran. Tomorrow being Veterans Day, I figured it was fitting that the man blog do a tribute. Um, I will do that from time to time. I mean, what kind of man would I be if I didn't thank those uh, responsible for our freedom? Uh, but yeah, you guys really are appreciated. If any of you viewing are veterans or soldiers, uh, we thank you. I thank you personally. Uh, the rest of America thanks you. Um, we know you, you uh, offer a great sacrifice and it has not gone unappreciated. So yeah, a man blog salute goes out to you guys. <clears throat> uh, let's talk a little bit about Kansas City sports. The Chiefs beat uh, the Buffalo Bills yesterday. Again, by the skin of their teeth. Um, don't know where they're going to go this season. So far they've won. Uh, just, uh, again, by the skin of their teeth. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Go Chiefs. Um, speaking of winning. Yeah, check this out, guys. Remember that uh, costume t-shirt that I made for my wife? She actually won. The contest that they had there at work. The costume contest. So she brought home a really cool looking little trophy. But yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. All for something I made for under 10 bucks. And you guys got to watch me do it. Uh, now, in sadder news. Last week, um, Gearheads lost one of our own guys. Um... I don't know if many of you remember, I grew up uh, listening to and reading Tom and Ray Magliozzi. Uh They had a show on the radio, they had a column in the newspaper. For years and years they gave uh, automotive advice. Um, just a couple of gearheads, funny guys. Uh, their answers were always hilarious, but yet they got the, the uh, question answered. Um, but anyway, Tom Magliozzi passed away last week, I believe a week ago today, I believe it was last Monday, he passed away, they said complications of Alzheimer's disease, he was 77 years old, so yeah, a man blog salute goes out to Tom Magliozzi, um, he will be missed, uh, anyway, you guys know that uh, every week I try to feature a, an old automotive commercial. Uh, so far I haven't done any for Dodge or Chrysler. Um, so this week's is a 37 Plymouth ad. Check this out. The 1937 Plymouth, ladies and gentlemen, and there it is, sailing along to new records for appearance, economy, safety, and performance. Sailing along the highways of the nation, the greatest value in all Plymouth history. And what a history of value giving, of sensational success, year after year, Plymouth has had. Plymouth is the only car that built a million units in the first six years of its existence. Then, in a little more than two years, the second million mark was achieved. Look at the record of Plymouth triumph during the Depression and since. There is only one way to attain this skyrocketing popularity, and that's by building extraordinary value. Proof of that value is seen in the scarcity of Plymouth in the used car market. Why used car specialists will actually pay more for Plymouth than for the other two low-priced cars. Plymouth popularity stands securely on its history of building longer life, greater safety, and more style and luxury into its cars year after year. And this year's automobile is a creation of such beauty that Plymouth stands out in any company. Look at it from any angle, and it's impressive.
See how the lines of the massive fenders are joined with the swelling curves of the smoothly rounded radiator shell. Body lines flow along the sleek hood with its modernistic louvers over the solid one-piece steel top and then down the handsome built-in trunk. The rear end is harmoniously balanced with those twin tail lights and a centered license bracket with a light below it. Plenty of room there and it's all usable room too for the gasoline filler pipe has been removed from the trunk. It's bigger than the ordinary low-priced car in every way. Inches wider from door to door this year which means a wider windshield for safety. Three persons sit comfortably in the front seat with ample shoulder room. The rear seat is more than four feet wide. No crowding in this commodious car. Of course, the new Plymouth still has chair height seats that permit a normal sitting position. More leg room than ever before because the expensive new high point rear axle makes possible a low floor without any hump to accommodate the propeller shaft. Two big rear windows this year and a convenient reading lamp between them. One of many thoughtful details of design. It's a great big package of value, this 1937 Plymouth. And beneath the beauty is steel for safety. Plymouth has had a steel body for seven years. Steel pillars, steel panels, and steel floor, sturdily braced and reinforced throughout with still more steel. Then to crown this masterpiece of body construction, there is a solid steel top formed from one piece of steel and then electrically welded to sides to form one solid rigid unit. The bodybuilders were thinking of your comfort too. So they provided a wide, deep drip molding that carries off the rain. For your protection, the new Plymouth introduces safety styling. Door handles have been redesigned, curving inward, so they won't catch your clothing. The instrument panel combines luxury with safety styling. All knobs and controls of the new Plymouth are assessed, including the ignition key. Nothing protrudes. See how cleverly the windshield control has been folded away. Now this seat back is padded to soften the bump in case of a quick stop. Note, too, that safety styling makes this armrest of soft sponge rubber. Plymouth gives you complete ventilation. Not only does the windshield open, but also there is a screened ventilator in the cowl. Ventilating wings are operated with a simple lever, and when the rear half of Plymouth's ventilating window is lowered, there is no metal bar to obstruct the view or to get in the way when giving hand signals. Rear quarter windows are hinged, so they swing outward on friction pivots. Here again, the protruding crank has been eliminated. Your Plymouth windshield will not be obscured by snow or clouded by steam. Through vents in the bottom of the windshield frame, warm air from a connection with the heater can be directed over the glass. For added comfort in cold weather, Plymouth uses complete insulation to seal the body against the winter wind as well as to keep out dust, gas fumes, and noise. The story of Plymouth engineering to conquer sound is a thrilling account of scientific achievement that would require a motion picture all to itself to tell. First, a body of steel and all one piece, so there can be no body squeaks nor rattles. Plymouth was a pioneer in the use of all steel bodies in the low price field. This new car has actually been silenced like a radio studio. The result is the quietest ride of any low price car. And Plymouth was the first of the low price cars to have hydraulic brakes. Every Plymouth ever built has had them, which means every Plymouth comes to a quick, smooth stop. You go sailing along in a Plymouth completely at ease and confident of the security of hydraulic brakes. It's a safe stop without skid or side sway because Plymouth's double acting hydraulic brakes assure an equal pressure on all four wheels. Self-energizing hydraulic brakes used by other manufacturers do not provide that soft, smooth stop for through their very principle of wrapping action, they have uncontrolled pressure that results in jerky stopping. The development and use of the equal pressure principle for years by Plymouth engineers has perfected the brakes so the brake shoes take hold evenly on all surfaces of the drum. Plymouth leads the field in steel body and hydraulic brakes, and the superiority of its engine is just as outstanding. Super high compression means economy, means Plymouth owners enthusiastically report as high as 24 miles to the gallon of gasoline. Floating power engine mountings with Plymouth calibrated ignition make possible this high compression economy with smoothness. Patented floating power suspends the engine in perfect balance and by permitting it to rock on its natural axis, it dissipates vibration and provides the smoothest engine in the industry. The rigid Plymouth crankshaft rests on four main bearings instead of three usually found in low priced cars. Four bearings mean longer life and economical servicing. The Plymouth camshaft has a special quiet cam design and rests on four large bearings, all pressure lubricated. And it's chain driven, which adds to manufacturing cost 
and at the same time add to owner satisfaction. Not only camshaft bearings, but also connecting rod bearings and main bearings in the mighty Plymouth engine receive oil under 35 pound pressure. That makes for economical operation and long life. And even today, not all low-priced cars have full pressure lubrication. All air that goes into the engine passes through a filter that removes dust and other particles that might damage cylinder walls and bearings. Not all low-priced cars have an oil filter, but Plymouth has one to keep engine oil clean and make it last longer. Rings of a special hard heat-resisting metal are inserted in the cylinder block to form seats for the exhaust valves and thus postponing the necessity for valve grinding many thousands of miles. Here's more economy. Plymouth pistons are of aluminum alloy for finer acceleration and lighter bearing load. Four rings on each piston make possible perfect compression and oil conservation. Plymouth cools the cylinder bores for their whole length, lowering the temperature of the crankcase oil as much as 50 degrees. Full length water jackets mean important savings in oil. But don't imagine that Plymouth's amazing economy has been obtained at any sacrifice in performance and certainly none in luxury. In the low-price field, there simply isn't another ride like Plymouth. No other low-priced car has achieved balanced weight and balanced springing that contributes so much to the even, smooth ride with front-end bounce eliminated. This 1937 Plymouth has thin leaf springs at the front just as flexible as those at the rear. Made of a molar steel, a special alloy, they contribute to the new ride sensation, Plymouth's famous floating ride. To realize what these big aero hydraulic shock absorbers give you in comfort, you must ride in the car. You must go sailing along in the Plymouth to get the feel of it. Plymouth places one of these low pressure, direct acting shock absorbers on each wheel, both front and rear. There are four of these husky fellows at work, saving the springs, smoothing out the road, smothering the shocks of a rough road, so it seems a boulevard. Now look at it in slow motion. See those wheels dance, but the car and the people in it are cushioned against road shocks. The Plymouth irons out a detour. Notice that the car takes the bumps, but the passengers never know anything about it. Here's another exciting contribution to your comfort. On the rigid X double drop frame are Plymouth's sensational rubber poised body mountings. Floating power engine mountings keep engine vibration from reaching the body. Now these spool shaped rubber body mountings float the body free of the frame. Thus the body is completely insulated against road shocks and noises. Now, both the engine and the body are floated on live rubber. No more is there any possible metal-to-metal -metal contact between frame and body. Here's more comfort, more luxury, more reasons why it's fun to go sailing along in a Plymouth. A steering shock eliminator absorbs road shock that might otherwise be felt in the steering gear. Silent U-shackles are placed on both front and rear springs for silent shackle action, thus greatly improving the steering action. Plymouth always rides on an even keel because this sway eliminator is connected directly to the front axle where a change in the car's forward motion first affects its stability. Travel the roughest road and you'll find that Plymouth's steering gear is virtually unaffected by any up and down travel of the axle. Wheel fight is eliminated for the wheels keep straight ahead whether you drive in gravel, heavy dust or snow. Altogether, Plymouth's shockless steering means new steering ease where the going is rough and particularly in city parking. The 1937 Plymouth is the most beautiful car. The 1937 Plymouth is the biggest car. The 1937 Plymouth is the most luxurious car in all Plymouth history. The 1937 Plymouth with its new all steel body and with its double acting hydraulic brakes is the safest car in all Plymouth history. The 1937 Plymouth is America's most economical full powered car. The 1937 Plymouth has the famous floating ride and no other low priced car has it. The 1937 Plymouth is the biggest value in all Plymouth history. Get behind the wheel of that automobile. Go sailing along in the new Plymouth. Discover for yourself why the motorists of America agree that Plymouth builds great cars. <laughs> Yeah, guys, isn't that pretty wild? Um, how the things that we now take for granted in vehicles, they considered cutting edge back in the day. You know, things like the hydraulic brakes, um, 
you know, and I, I had no clue that there was two little guys inside drum brakes back then that actually pushed on the brake shoes. Did you guys know that? I didn't have a clue. Pretty cool. Uh, I wonder where they bred them little guys at and what happened to all of them. I don't know, they must be living underground or something now. Either that or they're extinct. Maybe disc brakes put them guys out of business and they all died off, starvation or something, who knows. But anyway, yeah, and it also cracked me up that the, the different wording that they had for things back then. Um, they didn't call the drive shaft the drive shaft. They called it the propeller shaft. Uh, it just kind of cracked me up. I mean, that's what it does. You know, it propelled the vehicle. Um, so yeah, back then they called it the propeller shaft. I don't know when they started calling it the drive shaft. Um, but anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny. Just kind of neat seeing some of the automotive things come about like that. Uh, but they did have some cool technology back in 1937, um, different suspensions and things that they were working on. I don't know, I just thought that was a really cool advertisement there. But anyway guys, I've got some upcoming videos. I've got about 8 or 10 videos in the works that I'm editing and, and I'm playing with a new editing program and stuff and, and trying to get some videos put together. But one of my upcoming videos, and I'm almost done with it, I'm going to start filming a segment called The Sick Six. Tim's Man Vlog Six Six. And uh, everybody does top 10 lists. Everybody does top 20 lists. Uh, I wanted to do something different, so I figured I'd do The Sick Six. So I'll do a top six list um, every once in a while. I don't know. But the one that I've got coming up is uh, top six vehicles that came out of Detroit that never came out of Detroit. And when that, uh, I'll probably put that video up maybe later this evening or tomorrow. I don't know. I'm going to try to work on it a little bit. But anyway, don't miss that. And I'm going to wrap it up with that. As always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and liking and subscribing and sharing and um yeah, I really do appreciate all you guys. And I hope you have a good one, and we'll talk to you later.